Hello students. So this is the first lecture after the lockdown period and uh, this is lecture number 29 and the topic is the length of space curve. So what I'll do, I'll just explain you the concept briefly and we will discuss one numerical based on the same concept. If there are other numericals, they will be similar to the one that we will be discussing. So let's start with the first concept that is what is actually the length of the curve is. Now suppose we have a curve C, the curve that I am highlighting over here. This is this is the curve C and it is represented parametrically by the vector R. It got three components X into Y, Y into J and Z into K. If you look at these X, Y and Z, they all are actually the functions of the parameter T. If not, then first of all convert x, y, z in terms of t. And of course you are given the t belongs, uh, t rather varies from a to b. Basically a is the initial point of the starting of the curve and uh, b is the final point of the curve. Now the formula that we use to calculate the length of the curve is integral a to b dx by dt whole square plus dy by dt whole square plus dz by dt whole square under the root and we integrate this entire thing with respect to t. Means what we need to do, we identify x, y and z and then we take out the derivative of x with respect to t, that of y with respect to t and finally that of z with respect to t, scale them up and take the under root and then finally integrate it. Now let's go to the numerical which is based on this concept. Now the first numerical is find the length of the following curve. What the curve is given as RT is equal to A cos cube T into I plus A into sine cube T into J where T actually lies between 0 to pi by 2. So if you look at this one basically X is already in terms of T and Y is already in terms of T. So I will compare this curve with the standard vector that is XTI plus YTJ. Now what is the value of xt here? It is a cos cube t, y is a sin cube t. Now when we take the derivative of x with respect to t, a as such the power 3 comes down cos square t and the derivative of cos t is a minus sin t. So the ultimate expression becomes minus 3a cos square sin t. Similarly let's go to the y component. y is actually a sin cube t. So what is its derivative with respect to 3? A is constant as such. Now the power 3 comes down. That is 3A sin square t. And what is the derivative of sin? That is cos t. So the ultimate expression becomes 3 sin square t cos t. Now we got both the derivatives. We also know the variation of t from 0 to pi by 2. Now we apply the formula. See, it is the question in the two dimensions rather than the three dimensions. So the formula gets little bit shortened up. So length becomes 0 to pi by 2 integral of dx by dt whole square plus dy by dt whole square. Now we plug in these expression. So this is the value of your derivative of x with respect to t. This is the value of your derivative of y with respect to t. When we scale them up we get this expression. Now if you look at this expression here 9a square is common in both these expressions. Moreover, we can also get sin square common and cos square common. So when we take these common within the bracket, I am left with cos square t plus sin square t, which is ultimately nothing but becomes equal to 1. So what I am left with 9a square cos square t sin square t under the root. And if you look at this entire expression, it is again nothing but the whole square of 3a cos t sin t whole square. Now the square and the under root cancels down. Finally, I am left with within the integral. It is actually 3a is common or constant taken out. t is from 0 to pi by 2 cos t into sin t. Now there is a formula that if there is a function with certain power and is multiplied with some derivative of it, then what we do, we increase the power of the function by 1 and divide by the same increased power. So here if you look at this expression, sin t is the function and cos t is the derivative. So 
the power of sin t is 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. So it becomes sin square two, uh, t by 2, t 0 to pi by 2. Now if you put the upper limit first, then the initial limit. We know the value of sin pi by 2 is 1 and that of sin 0 is 0. So ultimately 3a by 2 is the answer that we get. So this is the way of solving questions based on the length of the curve. If you look at the next numerical, this is again similar to the one that we did earlier. Here x is a cos t, y is a sin t. You take their derivative that is minus a sin t, a cos t. Once we get the derivatives, we can directly apply the formula. We know t is varying from 0 to 2 pi. So dx by dt square, dy by dt square hold under the root dt. So it becomes what? You can take a square common, it is sin square plus cos square. It is 1. Now the integral of dt is t. And when we put the upper limit minus lower limit is 2 pi a. But if you look at the answer, this is nothing but actually the circumference of the circle. Because actually it was the polar equation that x was a cos t, y was a sin t. And this is nothing but the polar coordinates of the circle. And we know the standard formula for the circumference of the circle is 2 pi r. Here the radius actually stands for a. So your length of curve is actually 2 pi a. Similarly, you can go for the other questions.